Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to be talking about how to write a risk assessment for a piece of GCSE coursework. Now, normally the videos I do are focused primarily on biology, chemistry, physics and statistics. But I wanted to do a series of videos relating to coursework and how science works skills, because they are also critical. So what I'm going to do in this one is just talk about the best way, I think, to lay out the risk assessment to ensure maximum marks. Now, what I would do personally is something a bit like this. I have these four headings here. Risk identified, severity, likelihood, and what I will do to minimise the risk. And I make this into a bit of a table. So... Obviously, I'd expect you to do this with a ruler, but if you have these as your main headings, then this will give your risk assessment a nice sort of layout. Now, it's always worthy to mention whether the activity is a high or low risk. So, for example, if you were using a Bunsen burner and heating chemicals in test tubes or boiling tubes, that's a fairly high risk activity so it's worth writing that at the end of the risk assessment if you were squeezing a ball and measuring the time it takes for the muscle to fatigue and looking at whether the rate of squeezes affect how long it takes to fatigue for example a really nice little practical there that's quite a low risk activity so it's worth writing that at the end of the risk assessment now, there are a few extra bits I'm going to include on top of these column headings, but I'll get to those one by one. So let's first of all think of a practical, a practical that we can base our risk assessment on. Now, one that's really common um, to do in Key Stage 3 and also Key, uh, key Stage 4 when doing GCSE coursework is a burning foods practical. So you might have taken different samples of food and you're looking at the energy content in them. So you could maybe take some biscuits, crackers, crisps, those kind of things. And then you could look at perhaps the fat content. And then you take a small sample on, or with a pair of tongs. You light it using Bunsen burner. And then you hold that sample of food underneath a boiling tube of water. And you can measure the rise that you get in temperature of the water. And the longer the, the, the food stays alight, the longer you're going to heat the water, the greater the rise in temperature. So it would imply there's more energy. And you can look at if the amount of energy you have depends on the amount of fat, for example. So there's an example of a practical we're going to base this on. Now, in that particular example, there's many different risks. So one risk is a risk of burning oneself using the Bunsen. So under risk identified, I would put a little dash and have risk of burning from the Bunsen. Now severity, well that if you did get burnt that would be quite severe so you need, I would give it a numerical value. Now if I just write three it doesn't mean anything. So what I need for the severity column is a scale of sort of 1 to 10, if you like. So 1 would be very low severity, 10 would be a high or a greater severity, because then I can give it a numerical value. So for this one, we're going to say maybe, let's say, 7. I could explain that further, but so long as you've considered severity, that's the main thing. Likelihood, well, provided that you're following instructions and being careful, you shouldn't really be burning yourself in this. So that's probably, a, say, a three. And what I will do to minimise the risk, well, in that case, I can make sure that I have my Bunsen properly positioned on the table. So I will properly position Bunsen and when not in use use the yellow flame the safety flame so I can put slash use yellow flame now that is how I would advise to do this risk assessment 
and just follow that through and just come up with all the most logical risks, realistic risks in this. So one as well, if we're using um, food and heating water in a boiling tube, there may be glass breakages. So the risk of glass breakage causing injury. Severity, well if I would say that's fairly severe, so let's go for another seven. Likelihood, maybe possible, so a five. And we could use, what we need to do for the likelihood is, again, put in a, a scale for that. So one would be not likely, and we could say 10 would be very likely. You could actually say not likely or very likely, you could write the words... But a number just helps it to speed things up a little bit when you are a bit pushed for time when doing coursework. It's just important that you put that scale in. And a way to minimise the risk is to ensure essentially that all glassware is held correctly, held or handled correctly. etc. So it's something you will do to minimise the risk to prevent any damage. Now in this example that I um, said, this burning foods one, some people may be allergic to the foods you're actually using. So the risk identified could be an allergic reaction. Now I'm not going to do every risk for this, just, I'll just do these three. Allergic reaction. Severity, well, can be minor, but a severe anaphylactic shock could be um, an actual medical emergency. So we'll put nine there. Likelihood, well, hopefully before you've done this this practical or, or designed this scientific experiment, you would have considered things like allergies to the foods. So you would have selected your foods very carefully. So maybe a two for this. And what I will do to minimise the risk, you'd pre-select food and check allergies so there we have three risks with the severity the likelihood of them happening and what you will do to minimize the risk now you could flesh this out in much more detail you could have two or three bullet points for each risk and what you can do to make sure that you're controlling that but this is the, the basic layout that I think you should follow when writing a risk assessment for your GCSE coursework. And at the end, say whether it is a low or high risk practical overall that you were doing this risk assessment for. So in other videos, what I'm going to do is look at the different kind of variables that you have. It's like the independent, dependent, and the control variables, and even the uncontrolled variables. And we'll look at graph skills and ways that you can conclude and evaluate correctly. But for this one, we're just focused on the risk assessment. Okay, hope that helps.